Item number, SCP-654, Object Class, Neutralized, Formerly Keter, Special Containment Procedures, Direct Containment of SCP-654 is deferred to GOI-466, Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, as per the Boring Agreement. Note, following the Ursus Maritimus Incident of 2008, the Boring Agreement was created as a binding document, which allows Wilson's Wildlife Solutions to handle the containment of fauna-based anomalies within Clackamas County, under supervision of the SCP Foundation. SCP-654 is contained in a specially constructed habitat that constantly circulates salt water, kept at a temperature of approximately negative 1.8 degrees Celsius. Chamber walls outside of the aquatic enclosure have been plated with insulating ceramic composite. Description SCP-654 is a male narwhal, Monodon monoceros, visually disparate from others of its species only in that its characteristic spiral tusk has grown in a clockwise helix from the jaw, rather than the counterclockwise helix found in all other examined narwhals to date. SCP-654 is able to emit sudden bursts of electrostatic discharge from the apex of its tusk. The discharge is reminiscent of lightning and is accompanied by a loud crack of sound. While not particularly accurate, the tusk can be used to direct the discharge. Discovery Wilson's Wildlife Solutions employees operating in Tickle Creek documented an unseasonal lightning strike and had been sent to quash a possible forest fire. Having found only a large amount of melted ice in the charred remains of three bears, an incident report was filed, and the Foundation stepped in to assist in the containment of the anomaly. SCP-654 was located following a sweep of the area, caught in between the ice flows of the river. After a short corralling, it was sedated, placed into a porpoise stretcher, and airlifted to a park landing strip. From there, it was transported and sedated for the duration of the flight to Wilson Aquatic Center, where it was held in a standard marine enclosure until its habitat can be constructed. Addendum 654-1 Wilson's Wildlife Solutions Documentation on SCP-654 SCP-654 was found as a lone specimen a rarity for narwhals such as itself. I have arranged for a small team to comb the area where we found it for other members of its pod, as it is possible they also possess the same abnormality as SCP-654, though I doubt anything will come of it. By the by, will you be refunding us for the construction material and labor spent to construct the new enclosure? We had to spend a ton, and it wasn't really in our budget, but we wanted to do what was best for the critter though I worry it may be too small for it. Regards, Feowen Wilson. Thunderhorn has been using his ability to shoot birds out of the sky lately. Whether this is an act of malice or boredom is beyond me, though I suppose being stuck in such a small enclosure would make psychopaths of us all. I would like to look into enlarging his current accommodations, because rehabilitation appears to be a far-off goal with Thunderhorn. He isn't exactly the friendliest critter we've got around. Maybe he misses his pod. His caretakers tell me that it's more likely he's unhappy with the size of his enclosure. By the way, will you be able to refund us for the labor and materials used to build his current enclosure? It's been a few months, and I still haven't gotten a reply. Not to sound pushy, but this is a little ridiculous, don't you think? Regards, Feowen Wilson. It has been seven months since Thunderhorn was placed under my care, six since my initial request for financial assistance, by the way, and I have noticed an increased hostility between it and my staff. It blasts electricity at anyone who approaches its habitat without food almost without fail. Even if one is bringing food to it, Thunderhorn has made it evident that it does not care for their company for any longer than it takes to dump its meal into the habitat. We're going to try figuring out what's wrong with him, but I don't want to risk any of my volunteers being hurt. In case you're curious, I went ahead and estimated the cost of refunding us for supplies and labor, as well as maintenance for Thunderhorn's enclosure. 
It would cost $15,321.12, at the very least. I know you can spare at least that much. I've seen what kind of stuff you have in Site-64. Regards, Feowyn Wilson. It was noticed today by his caretaker that Thunderhorn appears to have some burns along his dorsal. We have reviewed all security footage of the past two weeks and found no evidence of anyone attempting to damage Thunderhorn. But we did find that it appears to have struck itself with its own anomalous properties several times. We had just assumed that Thunderhorn possessed an immunity to its own electric properties, but this is clearly incorrect. I wonder if perhaps he was able to avoid self-damage in the wild due to having a larger space to use its properties within. Perhaps this is why he has been increasingly hostile to members of staff lately. Maybe this is why we should expand his enclosure. Maybe this would help him not injure himself. Maybe, just maybe, this will help us keep him in check. Anyway, I'll be launching a campaign to cure him of his wounds alongside our LAIM vets tomorrow. Regards, Feowyn Wilson. Thunderhorn put up one hell of a fight, but we were able to get him under control with some tranquilizers, a crane, and a porpoise stretcher. Our LAIM vet says he's going to need constant monitoring and enteral feeding, but he will recover eventually. This will be very taxing on our constrained budget, and I hope we can negotiate some form of financial agreement to ease the strain while Thunderhorn recovers. While we are on the topic of financial agreements, perhaps we can revisit the proposal to enlarge his accommodations. It's been a year, and I still haven't heard back from you guys about anything I send requests for. Am I doing this wrong? Please advise. Regards, Feowyn Wilson. To update you on Thunderhorn, he has spent the last two weeks in a special enclosure we cobbled together out of what was left of the materials we used to build his original enclosure. Though his physical health is improving, his caretakers are telling me he is even more unhappy with his current accommodations, and this may in fact lead to another incident with him. This could have all been avoided had whoever monitors this email have responded to us. That being said, is this email even monitored? I feel like I'm shouting into the void here. Is anyone there? Feowyn Wilson. Thunderhorn is dead, and so is my center. F*** you, Feowyn Wilson. Addendum 654-2 Post-Neutralization Assessment of SCP-654 and Wilson's Wildlife Solutions Following the neutralization of SCP-654 due to negligent behavior by Wilson's Wildlife Solutions staff, the Foundation called for a re-evaluation of the Boring Agreement. Below are the minutes from a meeting between Wilson's Wildlife Solution President Feowyn Wilson and GOI Liaison Dr. Justine Everwood. Begin Log Everwood Hello, Miss Wilson. Wilson, you've gone and done it now. Everwood, I beg your pardon. Wilson, this is all your fault. Thunderhorn's death could have been entirely prevented if the supervisors just coughed up a couple of thousand dollars. Everwood, that's out of my control, Miss Wilson. I couldn't make them make a decision. I'm just here to be the middleman between your organization and mine. Wilson, I just... Why didn't they do anything? Why didn't they respond to all my requests? I don't understand. Everwood, I'm afraid there is more negative news coming. The Foundation wished to issue you a fine for the death of SCP-654. Wilson, I can't believe this. Everwood, I think it's unfair too. There is a silence for 20 seconds. Wilson sobs quietly. Wilson, First my dad, now this. I'm going to lose the center. I'm going to lose everything we built. Everwood. Hey. Wilson. All because you guys wouldn't answer my damn emails. What does it take to get your attention? Apparently losing one of the critters, huh? Whatever happened to the boring agreement? You were supposed to help us should we need it, but all I've gotten is the cold shoulder. Everwood. Look, I'm sorry. I know better than anyone that the Foundation can be a little slow to act sometimes. It's bureaucracy all the way down, and if my twenty years here have taught me anything, it's that you sometimes need to make a lot of noise to get noticed. 
Wilson, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to lose the center and everyone in it. Everwood. Well, there's no reason why this has to be a bad thing 100%. Wilson, what do you mean? Everwood, now that you have the attention of the higher-ups, maybe it could be used for good. Wilson, I don't know what good could possibly come out of this. Everwood, well, I remember when the boring agreement was signed. Up until then, Wilson's had only contained minor anomalies and easy-to-contain stuff. If memory serves, this is your first Keter-class anomaly. Wilson, I don't know what any of that means. Everwood, Keter is a word we use to classify difficult-to-contain anomalies. It means even we would have trouble containing it. Wilson, you would struggle with Thunderhorn? Everwood, well, it is big and unwieldy, summons lightning, and is an animal, therefore unpredictable. I think that qualifies for Keter. Who knows, people play fast and loose with object classes nowadays. Wilson, but what are you trying to get at here? Everwood, well, it's just a thought, but I think we could argue that this situation was caused due to Wilson's not having the means to contain Keter anomalies. Only safe in Euclid. Therefore, we could push for an edit to the boring agreement, saying that Wilson should only be allowed to contain safe in Euclid anomalies. Wilson, I, I guess maybe that could work. Sorry, I'm a mess right now. Everwood, don't worry about it. Why don't you let me make this case to my superiors while you take a minute to yourself there? Wilson, but what about the fine? Everwood, you guys have had five years of perfect containment record. I'm sure I could get them to forgive your first infraction. Wilson, thank you, Dr. Everwood. Everwood, please, call me Jay. End log. After the meeting between Wilson's Wildlife Solutions and the Foundation, the following amendment was made to the Boring Agreement. Wilson's Wildlife Solutions will only be permitted to contain safe and Euclid-level anomalies. All Keter-classified anomalies will be reassigned to the Foundation for further containment. Funding for Wilson's Wildlife Solutions will also be increased by 25% in order to avoid further incidents. In the event further anomalies are neutralized, due to negligence on behalf of Wilson's Wildlife Solutions personnel, a fine of 50,000 USD will be issued per anomaly affected. Additionally, Wilson's Wildlife Solutions was fined 50,000 USD for the neutralization of SCP-654, despite various submitted disputes. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-653, The Boomerang, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist. <laughs>